Before we start today's video, I want to just give a big thanks to Envision for sending me this awesome shirt. It says design makes everything possible, which is pretty sweet. They also sent me some other goodies like this, this little designer notebook with this grid in it so you can make some accurate wires and sketches. And they also sent some really sweet like laptop stickers. So I guess they liked what they saw on one of my videos or something and they decided to send me some stuff. So that was really awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, today we're gonna be designing a responsive navigation menu. So let's jump right into the video. All right, so here we are in Sketch and I recreated a scenario that I was actually faced with on my current project. We're doing a responsive e-commerce site. Um, so as you see here, I have kind of a desktop and a mobile breakpoint here. Um, we also, on this project, we're delivering tablet, but just for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna talk through desktop and mobile and how you're gonna design, how you're gonna make this responsive menu. So as you see, we opted for this like mobile first style of design, right? So like this menu is very scalable um, on both desktop and mobile. The difference being on desktop, we're doing this kind of, I think this is being called like a mega menu where a user would hover over electronics in this case. And we have this like menu fly out here, obviously on mobile, since the viewport is a lot smaller, you can't do that fly out. So we are treating that sort of like this where a user would like tap on this level two navigation here. In this case, it's electronics. So this is like the touchdown state on mobile because you can't do hover on mobile, right? And that would take you into um, this like level two treatment. So this screen right here is like the mobile version of this screen, just because the breakpoint is different. Um, but a question arose from our front end developers. So let me just bring up the Envision file. So by the way, this company is not the, the current client. This is like a recreation of the UI from the current client we're on. But anyway, the question arose from the developer. So like we, we sent them this like clickable prototype and it's pretty intuitive like how this menu is supposed to operate, right? Like it's like a expanding and a collapsing accordion style menu. Um, but it, this doesn't really paint the entire picture. And obviously we want our final deliverable to be like super high fidelity and we want it to feel really natural and you know, we're designing the look and feel of this product, right? So we are kind of on the hook for um, designing how exactly this is supposed to animate. And this clickable prototype doesn't exactly paint that whole picture. And if we don't design it, then it's kind of up to our front end developers to just like figure this out. And just historically, front end developers aren't <laughs> they're not always the best designers. They're great at what they do, but it definitely helps for them to have some sort of visual reference. And on this particular project, we have awesome, awesome visual designers, but they're not as um, familiar with like interaction design. So I kind of took the reins on, um, you know, taking this a step further and adding some animation just so when we hand it off to our developers, they know exactly how it's supposed to look and feel. Um, but yeah, let me just like click through this. So like, again, like in Envision, like the regular Envision, not Envision Studio, like you can't even do like touch down gestures. So this, what we're looking at here is like the state in which a user touches down on electronics and on touch up, they would go to this sort of level two navigation screen and they can get back. Um, so yeah, so I kind of ran with the sketch files that our visual designers had and I added a level of interactivity to them. So I actually did that in Envision Studio. So let's head over there now. So we're in Studio and I pretty much just ported everything over and recreated them inside of Studio. So here's all the screens. Um, we're not gonna mess with this guy over here, we're just doing mobile. But visually it looks exactly the same as that sketch file. The difference being though, I added this like background layer and it's a mask. So basically there's a rectangle behind this like shot by category and like all the expanded ones, there's like a background mask layer. And all you do to make that is a mask is you come up here and you click this little mask icon that says toggle mask. So notice what happens when I change the sizing of this, it kind of clips off that level two navigation. So electronics, appliances, etc. when I move it up. So that's sort of what's gonna happen when it animates, right? So like when we collapse the shop by category, all that's gonna happen is this mask is going to um, decrease in height, essentially. And that's carried throughout all of the expanded states. So it's actually super easy to animate once you kind of set this up initially for all of these, so like all of these navigations have like an underlying mask that like clips off their expanded view. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through how I would animate this. And one thing I need to do is create the initial state. So by the way, this by default is gonna be opened. That's what we determined on this project. This, this first um, navigation category is just gonna be open by default. Um, we're really trying to get the user to buy stuff. So we want the products to be open initially. So it's like less taps and clicks on desktop. But we wanna create an initial state, right? So a user is gonna open this menu by clicking this uh, hamburger menu. So we wanna create an initial state for everything. So first of all, I added this like background overlay layer that's gonna kind of overlay all the content um, once the user opens the menu. But initially we're gonna fade that out and we're also gonna take this entire menu and we're gonna move everything off the screen because we want this to fly in and maybe just like there and then fade it out. So when a user taps on this icon, we can create a link to this screen. We'll trigger this with a tap actually, because we're on mobile and we'll select motion. I'm just gonna leave the default for now and we could always adjust later, but point three should probably be fine for this micro interaction. So let's hit save and let's go to our menu. So this is like our initial state. We click the hamburger menu and the menu flies in and the overlay appears. And we can create a backlink like so, same thing. So now we should be able to get back. So this is sort of how that, that functions. So this overlay would be overlaying whatever content um, that's behind. I didn't put any here, but you know, that's how that would function. So that's looking good. So that's like the first part of the animation. So we're already bringing some more um, smoothness and human-like feel to this um, this app here, or sorry, this uh, mobile version. And now we can just continue linking. So, so we can take this shop by category and we can show the collapse state. So I'm just gonna link this shop by category. So users are gonna tap on this and we're gonna link to the all collapsed version. And if we wanna expand that again, we can link back there. And then say from this state, a user clicks community, that would expand the community one. If they click about company XYZ, they go to the, this one. They go to support. They expand the support one. And let's just continue linking all the screens. So I'm, I'll fast forward the video, but it's pretty straightforward. So I linked most of these screens up and watch what happens in our preview now. Now we really start painting that entire picture. So like it, it's starting to feel more like an accordion. Notice how this level two nav menu is just like, it's being masked off as it animates. And you can kind of see how this works, right? When we navigate from like, even when we go out of order, like say we're in support and we want to open up community, that one collapses and this one expands. So it feels really natural, like an accordion should. And there's one more thing I want to do. I still need to prototype this like click through experience. So like say a user taps on electronics, we want to get to basically this state, but in mobile. And we're handling it a little different just because of our viewport constraints. So, what I'm gonna do is we'll link this electronics screen, or sorry, this electronics like level two nav here to this touch down state. So I'm gonna trigger this with a touch down. And then from here on touch up, we'll go to here. So this is, this is how we're gonna trigger that like highlight state. Um, a little different than hover on desktop, right? We have to touch down to initiate it and then touch up to get here. So let's link this here on touch up. And then I also want this screen to animate to this screen. So remember when we're animating screens, we wanna look for the similar elements and how we're gonna position them on the different screens because Studio will animate the difference between them. So I want the shop by category to actually be on this screen initially but it's gonna fly in from the right a little bit. So let's just move it over 50 pixels to the right, like so, and then we'll fade it out. And then again, I want this sign in to, 
or sign in or create an account to animate. So let's have this move to the left once we get to this state. So we'll move it 50 pixels to the left and then fade it out. Another thing, I want this information, like the shop electronics and like these subcategories here, as well as this recommended, um, we'll have them fly in from the right as well. So I want to have them here on this screen and then we'll move them 50 pixels to the right. So one, two, three, four, five. We'll fade them out. Well, actually before I fade them out, let's take this background layer. So this, um, the background layer of this menu here and let's just turn it into a mask so it clips everything off. So it's not like bleeding over the edge here. And it looks like the sign in or create an account went away. So I think when I made that a mask, it got masked off. So where is this layer? Right there. So let's do ignore underlying mask so it doesn't get masked off. So that should work. So let's see what happens now. So we touch down on electronics, we touch up and we get to this screen and we can easily navigate back. So these elements are slightly moving in from the right but that subtle animation really helps orient our user and it's very familiar. This animation is similar to iOS and how it kind of slides over. So yeah, that is pretty much everything. And the great thing about doing this in studio is I can just upload this and publish it to Envision as I would a regular um, sketch prototype using the craft plugin. And then a client can actually preview this in their browser. Um, which was great for this current project because they're so used to using Envision to give us feedback um, from our normal sketch, sketch files. So rather than sending them like a completely new interface and a whole other learning curve for them, they can just you know preview this in their browser. Um, they can actually preview this on their device as well and provide feedback, which is awesome. So yeah, um, definitely brought a new element of interactivity to this menu. So from the top, we start here, we get the fly in, we can expand and collapse um, in whatever order we want. And we click into electronics and we go back. And compared to the original, which is kind of jarring and there's no animation to really help orient the user. Um, it's just a, it just really improves the feel of this product. Um, well, in this case, website. And I can now hand this off to a front-end developer and they would know exactly how this is supposed to operate and feel. And it gives them a visual reference before they start building and just make sure that, you know, the design vision is in line with what is actually built. So another reason to maybe adopt Studio into your workflow. But yeah, guys, that's been it. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me out. Um, comment below with any feedback or questions you may have and stay tuned for more Studio videos. And I actually have a bunch of Webflow tutorials on the way been really diving into Webflow, so look out for those. And I will talk to you guys in the next one.